That's about seed, that's about life. Uh, seventh generation is about vision. It's about uh, leadership looking ahead. It's about responsibility. And seventh generation reminds you that you have responsibility to generations that are coming and that you indeed are in charge of life as it is at the moment. Every generation has its time and every generation has its leaders and every generation has its heroes. Every generation has all of that. And when that generation passes, the next generation will have the same. They will also have their leaders, they will also have their heroes, they will also have their problems, and they will also have the continuing responsibility to look out for the next seven generations. Go to three. Done. Do all you gotta do is copy them. You have to raise your own leaders. They're not gonna come out of the air. They're not gonna come from what you can see around. Now. You gotta start it just the way a little plant grows. You gotta do that. Raise your leaders. And how do you go about that, raising your leaders? Is that with the attitude. Well, first of all, you have to observe that uh, all children have a common leader. You watch children play, and it doesn't take you very long when you can see who the leader is. And now you have to guide that person. And you have to deal with that person. And you have to recognize that that person really understands. And, uh, and so maybe by the time they're a little child, whether it's a boy or a girl, uh, you've been observant for 19, 25 years. It comes time to move and you walk in and you know who you're talking to. Because there's natural leaders. The most important thing I would think is that the leadership uh, change their values from power and authority to responsibility. I don't think, as in the United States, they have a Bill of Rights, you know, that they added on to the Constitution of the United States. And I think that should have been a Bill of Responsibility, not a Bill of Rights. Because people talk about their rights, their rights, but they never talk about their responsibility. And leadership has got to have that above all. They've got to have vision. They've got to have compassion for the future. They've got to make that decision for the seventh generation. That's not just a casual term. That's a real instruction for survival. Animal, every bird, every nation, every plant has its own area to be. And you respect that. You know, as we sit here and we look about us, there are these um, flowers. And no tree grows by itself. A tree is a community. Certain trees, certain plants will gather around certain trees. And certain medicines will gather around those certain plants. So that if you kill all the trees, if you cut all the trees, then you're destroying the community. You're not, destroy you're not just de destroying a tree. You're destroying a whole community that surrounds it and thrives on it, and that may be very important medicine for people or for animals, because animals know the same medicine. They use this medicine, and that's where we learned. We learned, you know, by watching the animals. They taught us a lot. Where is the medicine? They tell you because they use it themselves. And then if you replant the tree, you don't replant the community, you replant the tree. So you've lost a community. And if you clear cut, which is what's happening in America and Canada a great deal these days, and I guess around the world, then you are really a very destructive force. And simply replanting trees is not replanting community. You lost a lot in the process. If you don't understand that, you will. And that understanding comes in a very difficult manner. That of the hundred dominant economic units in the world today, the hundred largest economic units, and that's the word they use was units, 
49 are countries and 51 are corporations. Now, you digest that for a second. What does that mean? It means that corporations are the driving force of decision-making today. And corporations are not concerned with human rights. They're not concerned with human life. They're not even concerned with a proper wage for the people that are working for them. So what kind of decisions are going to be made on our behalf by this economic power, these corporate states, I call them? Oh, there's going to be hell to pay, as they say, for some of the things that are going on now. So I, I think that people have to be become aware and become awake and not, and, and power is always in the people's hands, authority. They need to come of one mind and they need to challenge the values that are being shoved at them today because this has become a consumer society. It's driven by economics. It's not driven by common sense. It's economics. But do all people have the possibility to to work from common sense instead? Well, I was born with common sense. That's why they call it common sense. You know, I mean, you have common sense. You just got to use it, that's all. And then you got to just evaluate what somebody tells you. You know, if you use your common sense, you say, well, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, um, I remember when one of our chiefs, we had a group of boys who had done something bad and they were sitting in front of the chief's council and they were talking about, um, you know, who was the leader. And I remember the chief, an old chief said, well, he said, you know, it's not good sense to, to follow somebody just because why? You can't give me an answer why you follow him, but if he were going to do something like jumping off a, a cliff would you follow him would you do that use your sense use your common sense and then he said everybody should be their own leader in other words do your thinking for yourself <laughs> So how is God going to talk to me no matter day? And he's going to bring that book. There will be no excuses. Now we see flames. We are seeing flames coming out of it. The compound is on fire. 